Hi, my name is Amy Feldman, Director of Product Marketing for Application Performance Management at Broadcom's Enterprise Software Division. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to gain insights into modern application environments. So as many organizations start their journey in digital transformations, one of the easiest things that they do is to start moving a lot of their current services into containerized environments. This allows them to be able to get a good understanding of how containers will work in their particular environment. Now, as these organizations start to evolve, and adding more digital services that might be available through a mobile device, or even adding in IoT devices as part of their digital strategy, they continue to evolve and start to adopt more complex microservices architectures. And in a lot of ways, they also start to adopt cloud native applications. Now, certainly over the past several years, we have seen the rise of containers. And according to recent research, over 75% of organizations by 2022 will be using containers. Even more interesting is that 50% of these will span across multiple clouds. Now, as we start to move into these microservices architectures, one of the things that needs to be considered is, how do I operate, orchestrate, and scale these environments? So what ends up happening is that you end up starting to use technologies such as Kubernetes. And Kubernetes allows you to be able to do just that, be able to administer, scale, and operate these across these distributed clouds. One of the other things that becomes very important in this type of architecture is the communication. And we see now the adoption of what is called a service mesh. And a service mesh provides physical routing at the particular node, along with centralized distributed routing to allow for communication across these microservices. This allows for a very rich and sophisticated communication and routing for these microservices as it goes across these distributed environments. So as you can see from this picture, it introduces a couple of different challenges. This new architecture is extremely complex, it's highly distributed, and it's highly dynamic. So when an issue does occur within the environment, how do I know what is wrong? Why do I have this particular problem? And do I even care that this problem has occurred at all? So when we talk about traditional monitoring, traditional monitoring approaches will use agent-based technology. These agents reside with inside of the environment itself. And what it does is it is pulling that particular server, mainframe, or database, or even network at regular intervals and pulling that information. So it's looking for the health and the performance as related to that particular infrastructure. As we move into these modern architectures, that really doesn't hold true anymore. And the reason is because these microservices are built to be modular and very small. And because of that, it becomes very difficult to be able to put an agent with inside of this container as it will consume all of the resources. So what we see is that developers are now starting to add in observability as part of their service. So they're using libraries and APIs to be able to push out the health and performance information, and even the transactional information of that particular service. So what happens then is now you have this agentless ability that then looks at that observability information and aggregates it across the entire infrastructure to be able to understand 
the traces as they occur across the different services, as well as be able to pull the health information out of those containers. So as you can see, this gives you a great view of your backend services, how they're performing, what they're doing, um, what the transaction looks like. But as these are related to digital services and the way digital services are being consumed by your end user, it becomes extremely important for you to be able to understand how the end users are consuming those particular services. So we need to be able to monitor that end user experience. And what I mean by that is you want to be able to understand what the performance looks like from the various different devices, but I also want to be able to understand what that journey looks like as they're consuming that digital service. I want to be able to understand the behavior from a user experience, and I also want to be able to understand what devices they're coming from and what their session details look like. This gives me information into exactly how my users are consuming that particular digital service. Now, when you combine that with the backend performance, that then gives you a complete picture of the health of the services you're providing to your customers. Now, as you can see from here, as this architecture becomes more and more complex, you're adding so much more data in the aspects of the amount of metrics you're collecting, the amount of logs, the amount of alerts that are being produced by this environment. That volume of data becomes extremely hard to be able to manage. And especially if you're using disparate tools to collect this information, it can become very problematic in understanding the complete picture. So what's needed is an AI ops solution that allows you to be able to collect, aggregate, and analyze the information from the user, the application, the infrastructure, and all the way back into the network. This provides you that complete end-to-end -end view across your entire digital supply chain. Now, just as we've seen in traditional environments, and especially traditional monitoring tools, we like to have a typology. The typology provides us a map that gives us a point of reference. When we start moving into this world of microservices where everything is dynamic and ephemeral, it becomes a little bit more challenging to be able to understand the dependencies and the relationships. So what we want to do is we want to be able to treat all of this observability information that we're collecting from this microservices architecture, treat it as a first class citizen with inside of our data model, and be able to look at the service mesh for the communication between the various different endpoints. That then provides me the additional information I need to be able to determine where is my nodes, where's my application, and what is the dependency in the relationship between those various different components. This gives me a complete typology that then I can put into an AI system that provides the context that that system needs to be able to draw those relationships and be able to come up with that causal pattern recognition. So with our AI ops solution from Broadcom, when you're looking at a solution, you want to be able to determine that you're able to get full stack visibility so I want to be able to get my full stack visibility across users, app, infrastructure, and network. I also want an agentless approach to be able to collect the observability information. I want to be able to treat it as a first class citizen. So all of this observability information needs to be consumed as part of another data set as if I were collecting from my traditional data sources, and then also be able to enrich my current typology. That typology is key for giving me context that I need to be able to recognize patterns and be able to predict those patterns in the future. That coupled with machine learning algorithms 
will me allow me to be able to reduce the noise with inside of this extremely complicated system. It'll allow me to improve root cause analysis and also be able to improve prediction and give me the insights that I need to be able to deliver a good customer experience. So with our AI ops solution from Broadcom, you can now gain insights into these modern architectures in order to improve your overall application performance and be able to transform your overall customer experience that is key for delivering those key business services to your end users.